Uh, well, welcome into this Photoshop in 30 Seconds tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. It's been a long journey, and it's the fifth and final part of the master guide, or whatever I'm going to call it, to using the pen tool. Um, now, these tutorials are supposed to be like 30-second tips, but some of them have been as long as 10, 11 minutes, um, and it's because I'm just sharing with you the pen tool as it comes to me. I haven't really planned how I'm going to do this, haven't really laid it out, just been going through, and there's been some overlap, but I'm trying to cover as extensively as I can what I know about the pen tool and share it directly with you. So with the pen tool, today we're going to cover um, the Pathfinder panel, but one of the things that I quickly want to cover is when you're drawing with paths with the pen tool, um, one of the things that you're going to notice is, let's say I just create a path here, right? Okay, so I create a path, I finish the path, over my paths panel I have a single working path. I can double click on it, I can name it, whatever I want, right? So boom, I've got a path. Now, if I create another path, right, so I go ahead and I draw, drag out this path, well this path ends up right on the same layer as the path that we just created. Now, you might think, oh, well, we'll get into the Pathfinder options. Well, the Pathfinder options are much, much different when you're working with paths. We can do something like merge shape components and that will merge our path together, which is very, very useful if you're just looking to build something onto your path so that's very useful but here's what I really want to show you I'm gonna get rid of that path that I just created the reason the path was created on the same sort of path layer if you will is because that path layer was selected if I deselect that path layer when we create another new working path we double click to save it it's going to be on a separate layer or path layer, right? So just know if you're creating paths and they're all showing up on sort of the same path layer, it's because you have that path layer selected. You need to deselect it and then create your paths wherever you like. So I'm going to delete that path, uh, but we threw in a little side uh, cyber jab at the uh, Pathfinder while we were there, certainly the Pathfinder while using paths. And that's about as much as I'm going to cover on the Pathfinder using paths. We're going to use the shape tool and using the pen tool to draw shapes. I'm going to show you how to use the Pathfinder with that right now. But some of these other options when you're using paths get very very tricky um, I don't think I've ever used them even once um, and and I honestly don't even know how they're supposed to be used I'm not sure how many people know how they're supposed to be used I mean the, the subtract front shape I guess could be useful in certain instances when you're using a vector mask um, but it's kind of complicated and I'm not going to go into it in this uh, series of tutorials so let's chat about the basic reasoning behind the pathfinder tools in Photoshop and I'm gonna explain using uh, the ellipse tool here I know we haven't covered shape tools yet we're gonna to get to that you can draw out a circle let's say I want to create like a little mini crescent moon shaped Sun up here in the sky above uh, Midtown Manhattan well I would do this and I would uh, create the, I would create this ellipse and I would set it to combine shapes and then I'm going to drag another shape in another circle so you can see how this new ellipse is sort of like covering up our ellipse before and then I'm going to set this ellipse to subtract front shape. And you can see that it just cuts through the bottom shape and preserves a perfect crescent moon shape. In fact, if I go back to the shape tools, we can really finish this off and get rid of all this extra path junk by just choosing merge shape components. And it's going to say, look, it's going to turn a live shape into a regular path. It's fine, yes. And you can see now we have this nice path, which is just a moon shape. And to this path, we can apply, you know, we can apply like a big blue stroke if we want, right? We've got this nice blue stroke on our moon shape, and it's a perfectly crescent shaped moon that we've just created very, very quickly. So let's take a look at what else we can do. Obviously, the Pathfinder becomes much easier when we begin drawing shapes. So let's do that. Let's choose a different color here. Let's go with like a, a just this green. And we'll just draw this sort of shape right here in the middle of our document. You can see, yes, we've created a shape. Now what we're going to do, we're going to set it to combine layers first. I find that it just it's much easier to use these shape tools when you have set to combine layers because instead of creating a new shape layer, you're actually working on that same shape layer. So let's say we want to add to this shape layer, right? We want to add like a sort of a triangular topper to this, okay? So boom, we've added a triangular topper to this. It's technically two separate paths, but in the same shape layer, so they're working together. What we could do is merge these shape components and make it one big shape okay great now let's say we want to subtract a gully we want to cut a channel right out of the middle of the shape so something like this all right so we select that um, and we would go and choose a subtract front shape area again we could just hit the minus button the plus button by the way takes you back to combine shapes so just note that little hotkey so we we can subtract that and then if we wanted to sort of commit this path change we can again merge those shape components I'm not gonna do that however because I want to also explain some of these other things intersect shape areas this is only gonna save 
this area right in here because this is the only area that both shapes uh, that's where they intersect so it's only the area it's the area where both shapes are kind of overlapping each other i guess that's the easy way to explain it then exclude overlapping shapes we'll get rid of just that area that we're now saving so it's going to save all the other bits all right, so you kind of have this cool shape like this. All right, so just know you have a lot of different options here with the Pathfinder. It's pretty neat. Uh, one thing I quickly want to show you with combined shapes is let's say we just want to save the bits on the top and bottom of this vertical uh, bar. We don't want to cut a gully in our triangle. We actually want to get rid of the whole center area of this bar. Well, remember, this is subtract front shape. So what we would do with this is we would send this shape to the back, then we would make sure both shapes are, well actually no, we would just select the front shape and we would choose subtract front shape. You can see we get rid of all that stuff and we just save the two tabs on the very ends. So it's going to subtract using the shape that's in the front on the stack of sort of your paths. So you can use your reordering here if you've got a very complex shape with lots of different paths going on. You can bring stuff forward, you can send stuff backward, you can bring stuff all the way to the front or send it all the way to the back. And that's going to help you when you're combining shapes or cutting stuff out of shapes or excluding overlapping shapes or whatever. And then of course when you have your desired shape, you can always merge those shape components and you now have just one sort of technically one singular path on your shape layer. And it works just like a regular shape layer. You can change the color to whatever you want. Boom. Great. And there you go. We can fill it with the foreground color. We can fill it with the background color. We can do whatever we want with it. And we have a nice shape that we've created using the pen tool or the shape tools. And most importantly, using the somewhat difficult to understand until you understand it and start using it, the Pathfinder options here with the good old pen tool. And of course, if I set it to a new layer and I draw, draw a uh, path, it's going to do just that, create a new shape layer in the layers panel. So for the pen tool, for the master guide to the pen tool, for all of this spiel that we've been spending the last five days talking about the pen tool, the pen tool, the pen tool, that's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodson, tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one.